I have this narrowed in view and I feel like I'm this tiny little person with a thousand things surrounding me and I can't really listen to any one thing because everything is pulling at my attention. It feels like everything is shouting at me. Hey guys, I am in my brand new house. This will be our first heart breathings video from my new house and I am ridiculously happy and excited to be here. After six months of travel and really a year or so of struggle to really get where we want to go, five years of renting, looking for the perfect house, we have finally settled in a beautiful house that is really just a dream for us and it's wonderful and it's awesome but <laughs> there is so much going on right now. And I have found myself to start feeling a little bit overwhelmed because every single room that I walk into has a stack of boxes or a bunch of stuff on the shelves that needs to be sorted. And so what's been happening is a real loss of focus for me. And I know that so many of you have been dealing with this recently too, where there's so much going on. There's so much going on in the world there's so many decisions to make or routines are kind of stop and start. Creativity is sort of stop and start. So we're just in this place where it's been easy to get distracted and difficult to really focus. For me, it's looked something like this for about the past week. I walk into a room like this that will be my new heart breathing's office. I see that there are a bunch of things here that need to be sorted through and I need to style these shelves. I knew that for a while I needed to put this brand new desk together. I needed to decide what was going to go on the closet here. I need to decide what's going in that filing cabinet. I need to go through all the files. So there's like 20 different to do's that come up as soon as I walk in this room to get something or to do something. Thing. But the minute I walk out of this room and walk into the foyer of the house, now I am greeted with, if you can see it behind me, a ton of other boxes that need to be gone through. So it's as simple as like walking through a portal. I walk from that room to this room and suddenly I have 50 other things on my mind and it just continues to kind of stack up in my head. And because our brains were not meant to hold so many things all at once. All the things that I had sort of put on my mental to-do list for this room just went right out the window. Then I walk into the kitchen and there's 50 more things in there. And then somebody emails me and says, oh, I didn't get this workbook or I need you to help me with this. And then my brain is just being scattered into a hundred different directions. And the truth is, this is an extremely joyful time for me and for my family. And I really genuinely want to just be able to soak it all in and enjoy it and take my time with it. But where I'm struggling is that lack of focus is putting me behind, which is then causing some anxiety. And I want to get rid of that and start to feel like I'm in control again. So if you're new to my channel, this is a Kanban board system, but done in a very different way than traditional Kanban. So I have three goals for every quarter. It's not always on paper like this, but because we were in an apartment and I knew we'd be moving, I did it in a way that would make it more um, easily portable, but I have three different goals. And then I've broken those goals down into projects that I believe that I could finish by the end of this quarter. And then I took each of those projects and broke those down into tiny little bite-sized tasks. And so every time I complete a task, it goes all the way to the bottom down here in the done section. And this system works amazingly for me. But there are times when life gets so busy or I get so behind or there's just so many things to focus on that even having my to-dos up on this board is not enough. Maybe it's because, like for example, in this situation, I didn't put my house and all the things that need to be organized onto this board. I will be moving some of that stuff onto my Q2 board, but I still have a month left of Q1 and I don't want to redo the whole board. So sometimes that's what happens is our plans change, things get added to our plate, things kind of get blown up, plans get blown up, and we have to adjust. So when 
things like that happen, that it's just like, okay, I have hit an emotional and mental place where I am not able to, like, even this plan is not enough to focus me because I feel like I'm scattered. I'm super unfocused. I'm high anxiety and I am feeling out of control. Then what do you do? So I faced this the other day that I was just kind of running around in a mental block. Um, and I just thought, what can I do to feel in control and continue to get things done on a micro level? And so that's what we're going to talk about today is just a simple system for getting yourself back into control, whether or not you use a 90 day system like this or a Kanban board or anything. If you are somebody who likes to plan and feel like you're in control, but don't know how to get things back under control when they just feel completely overwhelming or out of, you know, out of sync or out of focus, hopefully today is going to help you because I'm going to show you what I've done and it has totally changed the game for me. Okay, so here's what I gathered. I got just a black pen, some of these post-it page flags. You don't have to use these, but this is what I decided to use because similar to the sticky notes that I have up here, I really like something that I can move. And if you wanted to, you could also just use a basic checklist and just check things off instead of writing your tasks on a post-it note so that you can move them down. So I'll show you kind of either way. I also just grabbed a notebook, any kind of plain piece of paper. And then I did get this acrylic stand from Erin Condren. They have this Hello Kitty one that I absolutely love. It's so cute. Obviously you don't need this, but for me, this worked when I was traveling as a portable Kanban board because I can just stick things on it and it can stay on my desk, but it also comes apart. This part detaches. So it was easy, but it kind of disappears with that <laughs> white desk there. But anyway, some kind of surface. So you could even just put these post-it notes down on your desk. You could put them on your wall, your door. If you have a door that has windows in particular, that would work. You could also just put them inside your planner, or if you don't want to use sticky notes, you could just make a list. So there's really no rules. The key is you're going to start doing a brain dump. So when you're completely out of focus and every single time you leave a room or check an email or go to social media, something else is pulling at your attention. It's so helpful to find a way to focus yourself in. So the actual materials that you use don't matter as much as the process. And what I have found that helps me is when I am in this state where I know I'm off my plan and things are starting to stack up, but I'm having a difficult time focusing in on exactly what needs to get done. It's usually because I have this narrowed in view. And I feel like I'm this tiny little person with a thousand things surrounding me. <laughs> and I can't really listen to any one thing because everything is pulling at my attention. It feels like everything is shouting at me. And so I need to be the one to take control. So what I like to do is this. The first thing that I do, the first step is really a brain dump. And that brain dump involves multiple steps of its own. If you're really wanting to follow this and you don't want to take notes, you can find it down below or over on my blog. I will have all of these steps specifically listed out for you, including the questions that I ask. If you want to just copy and paste those from the description so that you can start this process on your own. But the first thing that I do is I ask myself, what deadlines are coming up? What are the things that have to get done that are on a specific time schedule? So for me, that's things like HB90 email sequence needs to get done. I have to get all of the registration tasks because that is a set date that I can't move back. It's something that's uh, already a priority that has to get done. Same thing with Publish and Thrive. We have our module four Q&A coming up on Saturday. I can't miss that. And it's already something that I've committed to doing. So sit down first. You can write them down on your post-it notes, each one individually, or you can just make a list like a brain dump list. And you might want to color code the things that are deadlines, or you could highlight the things that are specific deadlines. But that's the first thing to do to start feeling like you're in control is to really stay, take stock of 
What are my non-negotiables? What are the things I've already committed to that I absolutely can't miss? It could be family obligations. It could be coursework. It could be other things like that. Now, I also am signed up for a course that has some things going on that this weekend, but I don't have to be there for that. I'm not leading the group. I'm not doing a Q&A. I was just going to be a participant and that is going to be recorded. So that's something that's a deadline coming up that I can push back. I don't have to be a part of it. The next question that I ask myself in my brain dump process is, what are some easy things that I feel like are like clouding my judgment or hanging over my head that really and truly I could get done in a very short period of time, but I just haven't done them yet. Like the little nagging kinds of things, like taking something to the post office real quick, making a quick phone call, changing over something really quick, changing the sheets on the bed, sweeping up a mess that's in the kitchen, doing the dishes. Like it can be as simple as that, just getting the dishes done or cleaning up the floor in this one room with all the toys. Anything that has been causing you any kind of anxiety or that you can get a quick win from. So this is low hanging fruit, things that have been, you know, every time you walk into this room, you see that mess of toys on the floor and you just think, oh, I got to get that done. Write those down. Even if they seem simple, even if they're not work related, just get them on a post-it note because I have found through years of studying productivity and trying to find the best system for myself, that one of the best ways that you can regain control and get back to work is to build some positive momentum. And it's so much faster and easier to build positive momentum with those tiny, short little things that you could get done in five or 10 minutes, but that you've just been resisting, putting the laundry away, cleaning up those toys, doing the dishes, making that phone call, those easy, quick wins. The third one on my list to help me get that brain dump is, okay, let me just sit down and what's coming to mind right now. What are the things that have been causing me anxiety, the things that make me feel sick to my stomach or that I just know I've got to get done? They may not be as easy, quick wins. They may not have a specific deadline, but it's something that's causing me a lot of anxiety and I'm thinking about it a lot because those are the kind of things you want to try to check off the list as quickly as possible. So here are the questions that I ask myself to brainstorm these items. What's currently causing me anxiety that I can take action on, some kind of action step towards relieving some of that anxiety. So it could be that if I'm having anxiety, as silly as this sounds, about how I'm gonna style these shelves, then one of the items that goes on my list is decide how I wanna style the shelves or make a Pinterest board of shelf styling. And even if <laughs> I know I'm not gonna get it all done right now, just the fact that I know I need to make these decisions is causing me anxiety. So taking that simple step of making a Pinterest board to start cataloging ideas of how to deal with this mess is gonna start to make me feel like I'm making progress, I am gaining control, I'm gaining clarity, and it starts to take it off my mind. And so then when I step into this room and I'm trying to think, oh no, I've gotta get all this stuff organized, there's some part of my brain that's gonna go, don't worry about that, you've totally got a Pinterest board and you're working on it. And so because it's in process and I feel like it's dealt with or it's being dealt with, it causes me less anxiety. I also ask myself, what's currently feeling out of control? It's a very similar type of question. It might have similar types of answers, but for me, our eating right now is out of control. It's a different kind of grocery store that has been very busy the past couple of times we've gone in. It's also a 15 minute drive to get to the grocery store. So our eating has been a little bit out of control. I don't have a set meal plan. I don't know where stuff is in the grocery store. So it's little a little thing seemingly that is making me feel slightly out of control. So what could I do? I could take a little post-it here and I could say, create a grocery list and a meal plan for next week might only take me 10 minutes to jot things down, but I do know that I can take control of it. And then I'll ask myself, what other steps can I take to alleviate some of this feeling of being overwhelmed? Now, sometimes we might want to put things on the list that we're not actually ready to deal with right now, but we just need to mentally know that, okay, I understand it's on deck. I haven't made a decision yet, and I'm going to deal with it at some point, but 
I may know in my head, I can't fully take that action step right now because I'm not ready, but I just need to reassure myself that it's being taken care of. So it still goes on the list and I'll show you how to organize that in just a second. Once your post-it notes or your lists are made and you know these types of things, what are the deadlines coming up? What are the easy little low hanging fruit things that I can do? And what are the things that need to be taken care of that are most, most causing anxiety or most causing me to feel out of control? Then what I do is I ask myself a few more clarifying questions such as, can any of this stuff be delegated to someone else or outsourced in any way? So can you grab your nine-year-old son and say, clean up those Legos and I will give you a popsicle, <laughs> whatever it is that you can delegate or get help with, even if it's something that simple, or if it's reaching out to an admin in your fan Facebook group and saying, Hey, can you take over the social media posts for the rest of this month? Because I'm super swamped. And sometimes we hate to reach out for help, but when you're feeling super overwhelmed, it's not just a matter of figuring out what you need to do, but it's also sometimes very important to reach out to the people that can support and help you and giving over a little bit of that control so that you can get back on track. So what can be delegated? What can be outsourced? What can be pushed back? So if it was something that you had as a deadline or something that is that you know you're feeling overwhelmed about, but you need to make a decision about it, can it be pushed back to next quarter, later in the year? Can you take it off your plate in some way? And then finally, really sitting and looking at the list of things that you have on your little mini board or on your checklist and saying, which of these things can I reasonably do right now? What can I rely on myself to do? What feels manageable? And once you've asked yourself all of those questions, taking any of the sticky notes or post-it flags off this board that you've delegated or already made a decision about or managed to push back. Same thing with your to-do list. So what you could do instead of this little board with a post-it note is you could just make a checklist just with a pen, make a quick checklist of all those things. But now if you've got things marked off and so forth, I want you to put them in order. And that's what we're gonna do with these post-it notes. So once your brain dump is really finished, then you're going to prioritize these things. So all of this stuff should be things that are now on your list that you're going to commit to doing and you're not going to worry about anything else. So even if you have a big board full of stuff, if none of it feels manageable right now, just let those bigger plans go, those big projects, and just say, I'm going to worry about that later because right now I already have all my deadlines and things that I can handle are on this smaller board, the smaller version of the board. And then you're just going to organize it. So what I decided to do was I decided to say, I'm going to put on this left side, which is the first side you see, everything that is the most important things, which are the things that have to get done right away. So for me, I could potentially go another week without a heart breathings video so I can move that over. We need to get Evie's curtains up. That is a priority because there the sun is like straight in her room and she's not napping, which causes me anxiety and takes away a bunch of our day. So that's going up as thing number one that I need to get done today. I also have to get these module five updates done by the weekend and I need to get the planner done by the weekend. So these three things are things that have to get done right away. So I'm going to leave them on their own little spot there. You could also give them a different color if you have a bunch of post-it notes or if you're using a pen and a checklist. These are the most important priorities right now. Then I also have one little post-it note here that says five boxes. This is going to be a recurring thing that every single day I'm going to try to get through or unbox at least five boxes. So that's going to go at the top. Now in my version of a Kanban board. A traditional Kanban board goes left to right. So you start with the to do, doing, or in process and done. I like to move them down the board. So I say to do is at the top, my in progress are things in the middle, and then done is at the bottom. With this, you could set this up exactly the same way if you wanted to, if it gives you comfort. I was in such a rush the other day to take control and I thought I don't even care about a done section because I'm just going to throw them away. So I set off this little piece of washi tape at the top and I said anything that's currently in progress is just going to go above this bar. And when it's done, I just going to throw it away. But if it makes you feel good to see all the ones at the bottom 
and you can follow that traditional Kanban or whatever you want to do. But for me, I'm hoping to clear the deck and just clear this off and then feel like I'm in control. So I didn't even want the ones that were done to be showing up here. So the five boxes is something that goes in the pro like in process currently doing section. And every time I finish it, I can move it down for the day and then it comes back up tomorrow. So that's just a choice that I made. All of these others are going to be working on one at a time. So if I decide the curtains is the next priority, then I'm going to put that up here. And those are the only two, one recurring task and then one task to focus on right now. Sometimes when I'm in my bigger boards, you can see over here, I do actually put multiple things. <laughs> I tend to put everything I'm doing over the course of the week goes in the in process section, but Sometimes that feels super overwhelming. In a traditional Kanban, you only have one item in process at a time. Like that keeps you super focused. So if you're feeling out of control and you've been doing like I do, where you just put everything you're supposed to do over the week into this middle section, try just moving all those back up to the doing section and only put one thing in the middle at a time so that you can really focus, which is what I'm doing here basically is I'm saying, okay, I'm, I know throughout the evening, I'm going to work on some boxes and this is my daytime only thing that I have to do. And as soon as those curtains are up, I can pull this down and choose one of the other but I know that all of these on the left side are my high priority. Then I'm going to go through these others and I'm just going to quickly prioritize according to what feels most important to me right now. So for example, I want to test my computer to make sure it's still working because I want to use it for some of the things that I'm working on. Um, I'm already, thank you so much at 50,000, 51,000 subscribers, but I do want to do a 50 K subs Q and a and a giveaway, but I think you guys don't care too much if it happens after I hit 53 or it happens next month. So even though that's something on my mind, that's been making me feel out of control because I know it needs to get done. It can kind of go in this lower priority section down over here, but I do have a giveaway. One of the notebook challenges that has not been sent out yet. And someone else is waiting on that. So that's going into a higher priority section over here. Some of these are just here to comfort me that I know I'm working on them later. Some of these things are decisions that need to be made. And some of them are time sensitive, important things. But once I have all of this organized on this little sheet, or if you have it organized on a plain piece of paper, now I can take a deep breath and I can just say, this is the one thing I have to do right now is the curtains. Now you can see, I do have two things up here. So what I could do is Right now I'm going to work on the curtains and when those are done, I'm going to start working on these boxes. And then I don't have both of them up at the same time. Just one thing, one simple thing. If you wanted to, just as another possibility, if having all this stuff out in the open makes you feel like, oh my gosh, look how much stuff I have to do. What you could do is you could put all of these sticky notes into a piece of paper in your planner and then only pull one out at a time and just put it on your desk and say, this is the only thing I'm going to do is getting Evie's curtains up and everything else is just being taken care of later. And then as soon as that gets done, you just throw it in the trash or recycle it. And then you move on to the next item. This for me has been a game changer. If you wanted to, like I said, you could just write this as a checklist and just simply mark things off, strike through them. As soon as you get them done, you could also put like have your main to-do list and then every day in a certain box on your planner at the top of your planner, put a sticky note that says the thing, the one thing you're going to take care of today, or you could put, you know, two or three down there if you feel like you could get two or three done. But what this does basically is this allows you to get it all out of your brain and onto the page. And sometimes when you do that, you start to find that like, okay, this is more manageable than I thought. And I can do this one step at a time. And it just gives us this sense of control and peace. Then you start to take action. That's the third step. So you do the brain dump, which is step one. Step two, you organize them according to priority. And number three, you get into action. You start actually taking steps to get these things done. So I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to get these curtains put up and then I'm going to start working on some boxes. And so I know I have a plan. So even when I walk out here and I see all these 
boxes that need to be taken care of. I see the shelves. I see all these to do's around my house. I know that I have taken control and mentally I know that I have taken into account the deadlines that are coming up and the things that have to get done. It's all controlled. It's all within my reach right now. I just have to take it one step at a time. Another thing that you could do that I didn't mention earlier is remember you've got those things on your list that are those low hanging fruit. So for me, it's like the giveaway, the testing of the computers. Some of those you'll see I put towards the top of this second priority list. It's not as important as getting these things done that have deadlines, but once I get these things done, the curtains, the computer, the giveaway sent out, finishing this video I'm working on right now, then I'm going to start to gain momentum faster. Whereas if I picked something that was decision heavy for me, like deciding on this entire content plan, then I wouldn't move multiple things at once. I would just have that one thing sitting up here for two or three days or several hours. For me, it's super, super helpful just to kind of game my own mental health in a way. It's like a little trick that you can play with yourself. If I say I'm going to just knock out two or three of these in one day or like one hour, then I start to build momentum and I start to really believe in myself. So if you want to, you could have your major deadlines over here. And then at the top of the second column, really put those things that may not be the most important, but that you know you can get done really fast so that you can start to build positive momentum. I hope that helps. Again, I will have that whole process um, down for you in the description box. I do like to usually have an accompanying blog post, but I don't have time for this this week. So that is one of those things that's just getting marked off without apology. But I will have that stuff down below if you want to run through this system for yourself. For me, this is something that really I came up with on the fly of survival mode. How do I get through this? Because I really do want to enjoy this entire process. I'm so incredibly happy to be in a house that I have dreamed of. Like I'm going to be doing a video coming up about how basically my vision board has come to life in so many ways and what my next big visions and dreams for my life are. And I am sitting here <laughs> just in awe and gratitude and so feeling so much joy about where we are as a family that we're getting settled in, that we're feeling really good, that we have this beautiful house and I want to enjoy it. And I do not want all these tasks and frustrations and this sense of overwhelm and anxiety to rob me of enjoying this time in our lives. And you may be in a similar situation or you might genuinely just be going through a really tough time and you need all your energy to be going toward your mental health and your self-care, not toward this massive to-do list. So either way, I hope this system really helps you to feel back on track. Um, again, there still may be videos coming out a little bit later than normal or a little bit more erratically for the next month or so, but I will be here for you. Uh, the HB90 system, by the way, if you are interested in learning how to do this Kanban board, how to break your goals down into projects and tasks, we start on March 13th and I will hopefully see you there. I will have a link to join and sign up down below and I hope to see you in the class. All right, you guys, hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here and let me know if this helps you or resonates with you in any way and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.